Hey everyone, this is Steve Bishop from ProgrammingMadeEasy.com and Gartman Technical Services. So um, I have an interesting question for today's In My Opinion video, but before I get to that, I just want to mention, um, first of all, I again, I want to thank everybody who watches this channel and watches these In My Opinion videos. It really, I think it's a great way for me to communicate my ideas and concepts and stuff and just, you know, interact with you guys and give you guys a chance to ask me questions and and I get to, to you know, kind of give you guys my thoughts on things. So I really appreciate you guys coming and watching these. If you have a question that you want me to answer in one of these In My Opinion videos, as always, you can always go to the comment section below this video and uh, just put in what your question is. And if it's a good one and I've got time to cover it, I will. So um, today's question is actually a little bit more off the wall than typical. Uh, and I thought it was a good one just to kind of, you know, change things up from our typical, um, you know, discussions about access or software development, that sort of thing. Uh, but it is kind of related to technology. So the question comes from Harris, uh, and I'm, I know I'm going to butcher the last name again. I'm always going to be butchering last names. Gahari. Uh, it's Harris Gahari, G-H-A-U-R-I. So uh, again, I, I apologize. I know I'm completely butchering that last name, but you know, it is what it is. Um, so Harris asks, since you permitted us to ask any kind of question, which of course you guys are welcome to ask anything you want, I would ask something very different and try to know your thoughts on it. Considering how the video games of today would uh, today look like and the rate at which we are able to make them better every year, I would want you to talk about the concept of, are we living in a simulation? So this is kind of matrixy, right? You know, are we living in just a simulation? Do we have these robots that are harvesting us for our, you know, as batteries because of our potential energy and stuff? Um, well, first of all, <clears throat> I, I get into philosophical discussions about stuff like this all the time because I am a believer in, in God and I believe in Jesus Christ and I'm a, I'm a Christian, uh, but you know I have a technological background, so a lot of times I get challenged in the technical arenas of, you know, if if you believe in some of these scientific discoveries and theories and and things like that, clearly you can't be Christian. And I say, no, 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 hold on here. There's actually I think quite a bit of room for God in science, um, and it kind of touches on some of this whole simulation idea. First of all, I think that part of what we do is scientific discovery. I, it's, it's amazing. I love where the sciences go in a lot of cases. And sometimes, you know, I think scientists often have this, you know, they, they have a projection. They, they think that something is a particular way. And so they find the evidence to support their theory rather than having a hypothesis and then trying to see if there's evidence to support the hypothesis. And if the data, if all of the data you know, doesn't support your conclusion or support your hypothesis, then your conclusion has to be, it's inconclusive. You cannot just say, oh, well, I found that 51% of the information I found supported my hypothesis, and therefore my, conclu my conclusion is that my hypothesis is right. And that's something that I think um, uh, is going on, just for example, it, with, uh, you know, climate change. Uh, you know, it seems like every year they're changing, you know, is it getting warmer? Is it getting colder? Uh, you know, and, and I'm sure that's, that's a whole other controversy, but the bottom line is there's actually a lot, a lot of evidence both ways in this. And in a lot of cases, because it's such a political issue, a lot of the data gets skewed because they, you know, people, the scientists want the funding and, you know, political, uh, the political funding that you're going to get depends upon the outcome of the research that you do. And that's a terrible situation. That's that's really awful. You shouldn't have a situation where scientists are specifically trying to support their hypothesis so they can get more money. That's a terrible situation. And unfortunately, it's kind of skewed the numbers. Uh, I hope that we get a lot better information on things like that. But again, I'm kind of getting sidetracked on here. Let's go back to, to the matrix here. Uh, so the, the bottom line is, I think that at its very fundamental core, there is a problem with the scientific method in a way. Um, and it's because we use our powers of perception, okay? We use our powers, we, we, we measure things, we, but if you think about measurement, they're all 
personal constructs, right? They're, they're all constructs that we came up with. The distance between things, time is considered sometimes a, a man-made construct, even though we consider it one of our dimensions. Um, we have this thing where our perception of things, right? When we go to measure something, really we're using our perception of a size or an increment to determine that measurement. And we can't really do anything other than measure, right? We can't, we can't try to solidify that something is true or not true unless we have facts to back it up. And those facts are based upon the ability to measure. But the measurements themselves are a human construct and they're based upon our senses, right? Our, our ability to taste, you know, taste, touch, smell, feel, et cetera, et cetera. So all of these things that come from the scientific method are based upon our ability to perceive. And that's kind of shaky ground, really, because even in the scientific community itself, we have an understanding that perception is not always reality, right? We have like Schrodinger's cat, right, for example. We, we know that, that just the observation of something changes the outcome. So we have complete improbability with what we measure and what we sense and what we feel. So it really kind of does beg the question, maybe not a simulation per se, maybe, you know, maybe God is up there doing some sort of simulation. It's entirely possible that the reality, what we call reality, is entirely made up of the construct of improbable sensations. It's it's really kind of a bizarre thing when you really start digging down into the science of things, which is what drives me crazy about this certainty that people have about certain events that might have happened in the past or the certainty even of the size of the universe. Um, it, it's all based upon our perception of things. Now, I mean, there's a good reason to believe this, I, really, because perception is reality, right? That's the thing where we are perceiving something, therefore it is reality, but that means that fundamentally reality may not exist, okay? I, that's, that's just something that's kind of mind-blowing to me, that the reality that we experience may not actually exist because w fundamentally it's about perception. And we already know, we know, we know, even with the mathematical certainty that we have out there, again, based upon our own measurements and such, that there are 11 dimensions, right? We have M theory, the membrane theory now, uh, which is supposed to give us this idea of how our universe works. And it says that there's 11 different dimensions, but we can only perceive three and a half of them. I mean, it depends if you consider time, um, you know, one of the dimensions that we experience. I happen to think we do, and it's considered one of the 11, uh, but we can only experience it going forward. We cannot experience it going back. We have memories of the past, but we don't experience it. We don't, we don't have the ability to go back in time. But that means that we have, I guess, a small limited amount of dominion over three dimensions, moving you know, forward, backwards, left, right, up and down. So we can only move, we can only tangibly measure three of these dimensions, one quarter, okay, about one third of the dimensions that exist in our reality. There's two thirds of reality, of truth, of, of the actual universe that's out there that's completely unknown, that's completely undiscovered. How could we be so, how could we be so certain of ourselves that we know what reality and truth is? How could we be so certain if we only know one third of the universe by our own calculations, by our own definitions of reality, we only know one third of what's out there. How could we be so certain that we even understand what is true? What is reality? What is, you know, tangibly measurable? What is science? Maybe science itself is a completely flawed logic because it's based upon perception. It's based upon our perceptions of reality, which we know are flawed. If we know something is flawed, how can we say that something is true or factual? It's a real mind-blowing concept when you really start thinking about these things and really, do I really know that something is true? And that's why I believe that there is room for God. I believe that there is room for God because all it would take would be any sort of creature, any being, 
having the capability of traversing more dimensions than we can. That's all it would take. If some being had the ability to manipulate and monitor, even if you just take, just take the thought example for a, a thought experiment here, for example. What if there was a creature, some alien being, that was capable of traveling back in time? And we also know about this thing called the butterfly effect, where if you go back far enough in history and you change one small little thing, you can have a completely different outcome in the future. So because of the butterfly effect, if some creature were able to go back in time, they could put things into motion well in advance. If they knew, if they had the knowledge and the understanding of what those changes would do in the future. And even, I mean, if they have total dominion over the fourth dimension, they can make a change, go forward, see what the result is. If it's not what they wanted, they can go back, change it again and see what the result is because they have complete dominion over time. They have the ability to go back and forth whenever they want, just like we can go forward and backwards uh, and up and down and left and right. If they had this capability to traverse time, they have the capability of setting things in motion and then seeing what the outcome is. And if it's not exactly what they wanted, they can go back and do it all over again. So if you think about that, now that means that a being, a creature would have godlike powers just by being able to go back and forth in time. They have the ability to be unseen and put things in place that would change our lives, that would be miracles, right? So if you really think about all of these things, all of these things that happen over the course of time and over the course of our, our you know, perception, right? Our, our, what we believe is factual, and it all comes down to perception, and the perception is flawed because we only know one third of our universe. We only know one third of the physics that are even involved. And all it would take would be, like I said, some creature to have dominion over more dimensions than we have for them to be godlike. So how could there not be room in the scientific community for God? How could there not be? It seems completely, they don't need to be so, you know, against each other. We don't need to have this perception that science must be against faith. It seems silly to me. We need to find room for truth. We need to find room for understanding that we just don't understand. We're not going to know everything. And the ability that the idea that we live in some sort of simulation is entirely possible. Maybe this is God's simulation, right? Because we can only sense what we can sense. We cannot sense everything out there. And maybe, you know, maybe it's not some sort of computerized Right. That's what we tend to think about in some sort of reality, like a, a, a simulation is we think that it's some sort of, um, uh, you know, some sort of computer simulation. Well, it may not be a computer that made this up. It could be actually just, you know, God's mind that this came up with, with some sort of creature that that invented this or created this in their own mind. And we all exist in it. Uh, I mean, who really knows? That's the that's the point. Nobody knows. And we really aren't going to know. Probably, I mean, a lot of us Christians think that we're going to know when we die and we go to heaven. And that's the ultimate truth that we'll finally understand. But the bottom line is, while we are corporal beings, beings here on earth, perceiving a limited, you know, having this limited perception of our reality, we're never going to know. And there's no way for the scientific method to get to the point where we do know all of those things. Because we can only measure what we can measure. We can only measure these three or four dimensions. We can't measure those other dimensions because we can't exist in, well, I guess we exist in those other dimensions, but we can't measure them. We don't know what's in them. We don't know how to measure them. And as long as we don't know them and we don't, we don't have the ability to measure them, uh, the truth could be anything. And that just, to me, that leaves the concept of God to be completely possible. It leaves the simulation concepts to be completely possible. I don't think that we have an infinite, infinite multiverse. That's something that some, a lot of people think where we have, you know, every decision has a new universe sprouted off from that decision. Um, but I mean, it's entirely possible that we have multiple user universes by that being that keeps going back and changing the reality or changing, you know, things in the past in order to project the future into a certain way. Uh, that's possible, I guess, but we're only ever going to experience the one dimension and we're probably only ever going to be able to, uh, or I should say the one 
reality dimension. I don't know how you would how you would say it. one one universe, right? One we only experience the one universe, not a multiverse, and we're always going to have that experience. I think. Um, anyway, so that being said, I, I one of my favorite authors, uh, you know, Douglas Adams from Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. If you guys have not read that book, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. You should do it. It's a lot of fun. It's a lot of entertainment. It's just kind of a, a satire in a way. Uh, it's not going to be a knee slapper where you just laugh and crack up like, uh, you know, like you're reading a, a like you're watching some sort of comedy movie. But Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy is really cool because it kind of gives you some of this ins and outs of stuff, um, you know, about what it would be like to traverse the universe if we were, um, you know, um, exploratory beings, if there was only one person. <laughs> anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you guys have, I'm sure there's probably a lot of comments that you guys would have for what I've said here. Um, I think it's a real interesting topic. So thank you once again, Harris, for bringing it up. I, I really enjoy that it's something different to talk about in my video series. Uh, so if you guys, like I said, if you have any comments, if you have any other questions that you want me to answer in this video series, please just drop me those comments in the comment section below this video. Uh, you can always come to the website here by going to programmingmadeeasy.com. Uh, and always, you know, check out Gartman Technical Services. We do some good things. So uh, we do software development. We do web page, you know, web pages. So if you've got a business that, um, you know, you want a web page built for, we can do that for you. If you've got some IT support stuff that you guys need taken care of and you're in the United States, we can certainly see what we can do to help you out. Uh, we can do some you know remote remote support and that sort of thing so anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did please don't forget to like favorite and subscribe so hit that thumbs up so that i know you guys enjoyed this video and uh, until i see you guys at the next video i hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you so much for watching Bye bye